Horton Plains National Park, Sri Lanka. Unlike other national parks, where numerous animals are prevalent, the wildlife of Horton Plains is literally shrouded in mystery. Apart from the flora and fauna, there's an alluring history here, but one that is entwined with Sri Lanka's colonial past. Located in the Central Highlands, Horton Plains did not appear in many maps of Sri Lanka until it was marked by General Fraser in 1862. But even during pre-colonial times, this area was used by pilgrims who made their way to Adams Peak, or Sri Pada. At the time, it was referred to as Maha Elia, meaning the Great Open Plains. There are contrasting records as to who initially discovered Horton Plains during colonial times. According to some accounts, the European discovery happened on March 28, 1834, by Lieutenant Albert Watson and Captain William Fisher while they were exploring the highlands of Sri Lanka. Afterwards, it was named in honour of the then British governor, Sir Robert Wilmot Horton. But according to other sources, these plains were first discovered by a British planter named Thomas Farr. But Farr only arrived in Sri Lanka during the 1870s. Nonetheless, he is an integral figure in the history of Horton Plains. This is the Patipola entrance to Horton Plains National Park. It's one of two entrances to the park. From the entrance, we will travel to the famous Far Inn. For decades, this was used as a hunting lodge by the British. Driving up the road, it's useful to remember that, at one time, the park could only be accessed by horseback or hiking. Hence, these roads were once the horseback trail of colonial times. After the European arrival, Horton Plains was used as a hunting ground. No doubt the abundance of sambar deer in the plains caught the eye of British hunters. Even today, large herds of sambar deer can be seen at Horton Plains. At the time, the colonizers referred to these animals as elks. Hence, Horton Plains was also called the Elk Plains. Pretty soon, armed with hunting dogs and knives, the colonial hunters started flocking in. So in order to accommodate the hunters, a lodge was built in the park. This picture, taken by Henry Cave around 1900, shows the particular lodge. But during the time this picture was taken, it wasn't known as the Far Inn. It was a rest house controlled by the British government. But according to many sources, it was built by Thomas Farr in 1900. However, Samuel Baker, who hunted extensively at Horton Plains, states in his book that he built a lodge at the park, which was known as the Elk Lodge. But Samuel Baker's book was published in 1854. Yet according to some sources, the Far Inn was only built around 1900 by Thomas Farr. So it's unclear whether they are referring to the same building. Also, in his seminal book about Horton Plains, Rohan Pethiagoda states that the Far Inn was not built or owned by Thomas Farr, and that it was actually posthumously named for Thomas Farr. Nonetheless, this colonial hunting lodge later became the Far Inn, thereby becoming an accommodation for the overnight visitor. Thilo Hoffman states in his autobiography that the Far Inn was an unusual place, and that it was built by Thomas Farr in the late 19th century for hunting purposes. He further states that Thomas Farr was fond of hunting sambar deer and would lead packs of dogs to hunt deer in the plains. Here's a photo of Thomas Farr with his hunting dogs. The dogs were bred and specially trained for hunting sambar deer. The practice of hunting with dogs was known as running to hounds. The dogs were handled by locals known as dog boys. Back then, the only threat to the dogs were from leopards. Thomas Farr states that leopards would often hide themselves in thick cover and would wait for the hunting dogs as they came down a trail or game path. Thereafter, the leopard would kill each dog, one after another. Thomas Farr further stated that the leopard was the sworn enemy of hunting dogs or elk hounds. In fact, Harry Story's book from 1907, Hunting and Shooting in Ceylon includes a whole chapter written by Thomas Farr on hunting sambar deer at Horton Plains. Also, Samuel Baker's book from 1854, The Rifle and the Hound in Ceylon, also includes a chapter about hunting sambar deer at Horton Plains. Although the hunting mentality is outdated, these books provide a valuable look at Horton Plains during colonial times. Furthermore, 
The streams of Horton Plains were used for fishing purposes too. Thus, in the late 1800s, rainbow trout were introduced to these waters. Of course, the introduction of exotic fish was detrimental to the stream ecology. Until relatively recently, sports fishermen continued to fish for rainbow trout at Horton Plains. Thus, the introduction of trout to the waters of Horton Plains caused an influx of more visitors. Henry Cave, who took some valuable photographs of Horton Plains in the late 1800s, mentions that at one time, these plains were isolated from human interference, that animals like wild boar, sambar deer, and even leopards lived in excessive numbers. He also mentioned that in order to accommodate the influx of visitors to Horton Plains, the rest house was going to be renovated. Another prominent individual that visited Horton Plains was German scientist Ernest Haeckel, who came to Sri Lanka back in 1882. Haeckel also stayed at the Far Inn. From there, he visited the famous World's End Cliff. This sheer cliff, which offers a panoramic view of the landscape below, is the reason why most people visit Horton Plains nowadays. And it is at this very same spot that Ernest Haeckel saw elephants, in fact, he even produced a painting of an elephant at World's End. To date, this may be the only illustration to show an elephant at Horton Plains. Today, there are no elephants at Horton Plains. During the first decade of the 20th century, elephants completely disappeared from the area. However, at one time, elephants were so abundant in the highlands of Sri Lanka that there was even a place called Elephant Plain at Nuwara Elia, which is situated 20 kilometers away from Horton Plains. Around the same time in 1880s, Thomas Farr, who was also a keen naturalist, discovered the blooming cycle of the Nelu flower. He discovered that this flower bloomed every 12 years and that it would bloom again in 1917. Even though the flowers bloomed in 1917, by that time Thomas Farr was back in England. Two years later he died and his ashes were scattered at Horton Plains. Samuel Baker returned to England later on too. Today there's a waterfall named after him at Horton Plains called Baker's Falls, which is a major attraction at the park alongside World's End. Today, the legendary Far Inn is a visitor information center owned by the Department of Wildlife Conservation. In 1969, Horton Plains was designated as a nature reserve. Due to its ecological importance, Horton Plains was elevated to the status of a national park in 1988. 